Hello, my name is Richard Stepp, Standard Plans Engineer with FDOT Central Office in Tallahassee. Welcome to the 2023 FDOT Design Manual Update Training for FDM 215 on roadside safety. Today we just have a brief presentation to show you some of the key revisions made for this cycle. First up, details were added under Figure 215.2.1 for the Clear Zone Plan View. As part of the TDH migration, the Turnpike Enterprise had requested some additional detail to show exactly how the clear zone limits are measured at ramps and ramps with auxiliary lanes. And so you can see the clear zone for the main line follows along parallel to the center line of the main line roadway. And that is basically until it encounters the clear zone of the ramp, which is following along parallel to the center line of the ramp. And so down below when you have auxiliary lanes, it's a similar story. The clear zone limit follows along parallel to the center line of the main line, and that's until it encounters the clear zone of the ramp, which is tapering away from the main line. And now looking on the trailing end of both scenarios, you can see visually that the same philosophy that was just explained applies, only in the reverse direction. So the limit of clear zone for the main line follows along parallel to the center line of the main line until it encounters this clear zone limit for the ramp, which is tapering away. Next up, looking at Table 215.2.2 for minimum lateral offsets. The addition comes down here for bridge piers and abutments. For existing conditions and triple R projects, some districts were having difficulty meeting these minimum lateral offsets, usually in urban conditions. And so keeping that in mind, a revision was made to provide some more leeway for triple R projects. And so zooming in, you can see that for triple R projects, 1.5 feet is now acceptable with design speeds of 25 to 35 miles per hour, and 4 feet is now acceptable with design speeds of 40 to 45 miles per hour. And this generally follows the past successful practice of our other roadside items. For example, as you can see for existing utilities above, this is similar, 1.5 and 4 feet. And now moving on to section 215.2.6 for roadside slope criteria. Some information from FDM 210.211 was now moved into FDM 215 regarding when to involve the district geotech engineer. And because maintaining these slopes successfully is required for roadside safety, it was thought that the rational place to put this information was in section 215 for roadside safety. It's also convenient because most designers go looking to FDM 215 to know what slopes they may place on the roadside. And so the direct guidance for these slopes is helpful when placed here. So having said that, the policy is, for slopes steeper than 1 to 2, obtain concurrence from the district geotech engineer and the district maintenance engineer. You want to ensure that the slope is stable and that it can be practically maintained. And the next revision we'll show you is under section 215.4.6.1 for barrier offset. And more specifically, we're talking about these setback distance requirements as measured to items behind the barrier. And so just to refresh your memory, setback is defined as the distance between the face of the barrier and the above ground hazard behind the barrier. And so you can see in the upper right corner the way the setback distance is drawn in this figure. Now that said, the setback distance requirement is dependent on whether the item is considered discontinuous or continuous. And so based on some designer feedback showing that there was some misunderstanding on the difference between continuous and discontinuous, some new language was added to this section to help clarify. And so down here in yellow, you can see this reads, Setback requirements for discontinuous items apply to discrete features such as piers, poles, or sign supports. And so these things are good examples of discontinuous items that would have an approach face but that are not long and continuous. And so the next part of this clarification reads apply continuous item setback requirements to other features. So if it's not a discrete item such as a pier, a pole, or a sign support, then you follow the continuous item setback requirement. And one of those requirements for continuous items is shown in Table 215.4.2, among other locations. And so again, the important thing here is just to clarify the difference between discontinuous and continuous items as they relate to the setback distance requirements. And so last but not least, we're still looking under Section 215.4.6.1 for barrier offsets. And so lately, particularly in our more crowded cities, it's becoming more and more common to have dual bridges in a configuration like it's shown over here at the right. When this occurs, you can see that the back side of this traffic railing on the higher side can be placed inside the zone of intrusion or the setback distance for the traffic railing on the lower side. And so now in the FDM, we do want to address this and show that this condition is acceptable. And so to explain that, the new language is shown in yellow here. It reads back-to-back -back railings on separated parallel or adjacent bridges are exempt from the bridge traffic railing setback requirements of Table 215.4.2, provided the back face of the higher bridge railing is smooth and continuous with no attachments, for example, sign supports, pedestals, bullet rails, etc. 
And so for an item like this that's very smooth, rigid, and unavoidable, an errant vehicle that's impacting this barrier on the low side would likely slide along without snagging, and so that's considered to be acceptable from a crashworthiness standpoint. And for that reason, this type of configuration is considered acceptable. And with that, we've reached the end of our short update training for FDM 215 for roadside safety. A special thanks to Derwood Shepard for making these revisions and helping to improve this chapter. Thank you for your time and attention.